Hey folks, welcome back, Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over 5 worked examples to show you how to do problems involving impulse and change in momentum. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says that in a game of 10 pin bowling, a 1.5kg bowling ball moving at 12 meters per second strikes a single stationary pin of mass 0.5kg. After the collision, the bowling ball moves off with a speed of 4 meters per second. Part A says to sketch this situation. So we'll start with the bowling ball of mass 1.5 kilograms, and we'll assume this is moving to the right with a speed of 12 meters per second. Then we have our pin of 0.5 kilograms, which is stationary at 0 meters per second. So that's our before situation. Then after the collision, we've got our bowling ball again of mass 1.5 kilograms, this time moving to the right with a speed of 4 meters per second, and our pin of mass 0.5 kilograms is now moving to the right with an unknown speed V2. Part B says to find the speed of the pin V2 after the collision. So to do this, we're going to use our conservation of linear momentum. So we have total momentum before equals total momentum after. Writing this in symbol form now, we have M1U1 plus M2U2 equals M1V1 plus M2V2. And now we can simply sub in the numbers. We can not simplify this one like we did for inelastic collisions because the two speeds are not going to be the same after the collision. So when we put in our numbers we get 1.5 times 12 plus 0.5 times 0 equals 1.5 times 4 plus 0.5 v2. Notice this term here will cancel out because it's times by 0 so it will disappear. So if we take this term over to the other side by dividing this by this and then swap both sides we're left with 0.5 v2 equals 12. And dividing both sides now by 0.5 gives us V2 equals 24 meters per second. Part C says to find the change in momentum of the bowling ball. Well remember, change in momentum is equal to MV minus MU, or you can simplify that to M brackets V minus U. If we then sub in the numbers, we get 1.5 times 4 minus 12, which is equal to minus 12 kilogram meters per second. And notice it's a negative change in momentum because the bowling ball is slowing down. Part D says what is the impulse? Well to find this we simply need to know the relationship between impulse and change in momentum which is impulse is equal to the change in momentum which means that this is equal to minus 12 kilogram meters per second. We've already done the work for that. Or because impulse also has the units of newton seconds we could say minus 12 newton seconds as well. Question 2 says that a 50 kilogram boy jumps from a platform and lands in a sand pit at 3 meters per second. If he comes to rest 0.25 seconds after he hits the sand, calculate in part A the change in momentum of the boy. To do this we're going to use change in momentum equals m brackets v minus u, again simplifying that term, and substituting in the numbers now gives us mass of 50 times 0 minus 3. Notice that our v is 0 because he's coming to rest, so we then end up with minus 150 kilogram meters per second. So because the boy's coming to rest, we should expect a negative change in momentum. Part B says to calculate the average force acting to slow the boy down. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the force F. We know that the time of contact is 0.25 seconds and the change in momentum from part A, MV minus U, is equal to minus 150 kilogram meters per second. So we can then write down our equation FT equals MV minus MU, which simplifies to M brackets V minus U. So substituting in our numbers now, we get F times 0.25 equals minus 150. This is looking quite simple because we'd already worked out the change in momentum from part A. And dividing both sides by 0 0.25 now to get F on its own, we end up with F equals minus 600 newtons. And the negative sign there for the force is just due to the negative change in momentum from part A. Question 3 says that a 0.05 kilogram golf ball at rest is hit with a tailor-made driver and moves off at 70 meters per second. If the time of contact is 15 milliseconds, find the average force applied. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the force F. We know that the time of contact T is 15 milliseconds, which we need to convert into seconds. So this is 15 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. We then have a mass of 0.05 kilograms for the ball, a final speed of 70 meters per second, and an initial speed of 0 meters per second because the ball is at rest to begin with. So writing down our equation, we have FT equals MV minus MU, which again we can simplify to M brackets V minus U. And substituting in our numbers now, we have F times 15 times 10 to the minus 3 equals 0.05 times 70 minus 0. So dividing both sides by 15 times 10 to the minus 3, this term here, to take it over to the other side, we end up with F equals 233 newtons. Question 4 says that a 0.2 kilogram ball travelling at 5 meters per second rebounds from a wall. 
its change in momentum is minus 1.5 kg meters per second. The ball is in contact with the wall for 40 milliseconds. We've got our picture here showing the ball going towards the wall at 5 meters per second, and then after it's rebounded from the wall, we don't know what that speed is. Part A says to calculate the ball's rebound velocity, so that is this unknown velocity here. Well, because we know the ball's change in momentum here, we can write down change in momentum is equal to m brackets v minus u. Substituting in our numbers, we have minus 1.5 equals 0 0.2 times v minus 5. So that is because our initial speed was 5, but we're trying to find what V is, the final speed, which is also its rebound speed. So multiplying out those brackets there, we have minus 1.5 equals 0.2 V minus 1, adding 1 to both sides now and swapping the sides to get V on the left hand side, gives us 0.2 V equals minus 0.5, which gives a rebound velocity V of minus 2.5 meters per second. Notice it's a negative sign, which we should expect because the ball is now traveling to the left as opposed to to the right. So we're assuming that motion to the left here is negative and motion to the right is positive. Part B says to calculate the average force acting on the wall. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the force F. We know the time of contact is 40 milliseconds, which we need to convert into seconds. So we get 40 times 10 to the minus three seconds. Our mass is 0.2 kilograms. The final speed V is minus 2.5 meters per second and the initial speed u is 5 meters per second. So writing down our equation now, we have ft equals mv minus mu equals mv minus u. Substituting in the numbers, we get f times 40 times 10 to the minus 3 equals 0 0.2 times minus 2.5 minus 5. Dividing both sides by this term here to get f on its own, we get f equals minus 37.5 newtons. Lastly, question 5 says that a tennis ball of mass 0.1 kilograms moves through the air at 4 meters per second horizontally. Andy Murray strikes the ball so that it returns the way it came at 5 meters per second. So we've got the ball moving to the right at 4 meters per second and then after moving to the left at 5 meters per second. Then says if the average force exerted by the tennis racket on the ball was 30 newtons, calculate the impulse for part A. So writing down our relationship between impulse and change in momentum, we have impulse equals change in momentum. So this equals m brackets v minus u. Substituting in the numbers, we get 0 0.1 times minus 5 minus 4. So our v is minus 5 because it was moving to the left. And this is the positive 4, but we've got that negative in here. So if you put that into your calculator, we get minus 0 0.9 newton seconds. You could also have kilogram meters per second there instead. Part B then says calculate the time during which the racket was in contact with the tennis ball. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the time of contact T. We know the average force is 30 newtons. The change in momentum mv minus u from part A is 0 0.9 kilogram meters per second. Notice that I'm just taking the magnitude of that change in momentum because the negative sign would give me a negative time, which wouldn't really make sense. And so writing down our equation, we have ft equals mv minus u. Substituting in the numbers, we get 30 times t equals 0 0.9. And dividing both sides by 30 gives us t equals 0 0.03 seconds. And notice that that is a positive time because we've just ignored the negative sign from our negative impulse there. Or another way of saying this is 30 milliseconds. And remember, time of contacts are always going to be really small in the form of around milliseconds. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.